I started my life being very interested in snakes. I, I never did anything academic with it, to be honest with you. I just did a lot of reading and a lot of uh, my personal life was involved in uh, looking at snakes, studying them, collecting them. When I read that your mother, when you brought your first live snake home, your mother was very encouraging. She yeah. actually let you keep it. It was amazing. I think I, I can owe it all to my mother because she was the first one to uh, convert uh, a, an old fish aquarium that we had in the house into an aquarium, where I could, uh, terrarium I should say, where we could actually I could keep live snakes at home. This was up in northern New York State when I was just four or five years old, so that was quite a long time ago. Then we all moved to India when I was eight years old, and it was like moving to the land of snakes. I was just a very lucky young boy, and it's been all uh, all looking up since then. During the early 70s, uh, when I actually moved to Madras, I met the Irlas, and uh, these were a tribe catching snakes for the snake skin industry. But I had a couple of ideas for them because I realized and I knew that the writing was on the wall, the snake skin industry was going to collapse, and it sure enough was stopped. So I helped them set up a cooperative society uh, for producing venom. and. This is my uh, probably primary reason and interest in attending a workshop like this here at CMC um, because, uh, well, I've always been very interested in snakes and if you're interested in snakes, uh, snake bite is obviously going to be there too. Uh, snake bite is a serious problem in India and if I'm sort of working on the premise that snakes are actually an acceptable animal on the planet and uh, worth well, for us to uh, nurture or at least to uh, uh, provide them living space the way we have living space, uh, you, we've got to deal with the snake bite issue. And uh, by helping the Erdalus produce venom, I've actually contributed to some degree to uh, the production of antivenom serum, which is of course the only treatment for snake bite in India. So I guess I do have quite a, a role to play, or at least I did have a role to play. So my interest continues, it's long abiding, and uh, although I've branched out into other aspects of uh, reptile study and uh, conservation, including with crocodiles, my a prime interest still sticks to, uh, to snakes. I, I think um, there is a, a great emphasis and, uh, on wanting to identify the species of snake which has bitten somebody, um, but we precisely have what's called a polyvalent antivenom serum for the four major species of venomous snakes in India because uh, at the primary health center level, for example, where um, uh, doctors who may not be familiar with herpetology, with the different species of snakes, and even not so familiar with the various symptoms of envenomation, have a one sure cure, and that is the polyvalent antivenom. If we start um, I would even use the word complicating it by making uh, monovalent antivenoms right now. It could actually come in the way because there's a time factor here. When someone's bitten by a snake, it's a medical emergency. There's no, there's no doubt about it. You have to deal with it fast within the golden hour. And there's no time to just sort of do various experiments or find out which snake had bitten him or and hope that he brought the dead specimen and all these. These are all wishful thinking. So um, I think with the various aspects which are being brought out at this meeting and which we've heard about before, there is considerable geographic variation in venoms. So the venom of a Russell's viper from South India may be quite different from one in North India. The fact that the venom is now being used for antivenom production is from one source, the very same Irla cooperative which I helped to set up is, I mean it's great for the Irlas, but it isn't necessarily great for the production of antivenom. It, it should be more representative from different parts of the country. So there are a few aspects which have to be looked at to try to simplify the whole process. I'm uh, just very pleased to be able to mention uh, a friend of mine, David Williams, is uh, doing a, a, a project which along the same lines in the country of Papua New Guinea where they've just produced an antivenom serum. It's a one-shot dose so you get bitten by any of the venomous snakes there and you get one injection and you're okay. Of course the uh, levels of public awareness are, are increasing over there whereas here we've got
many, many languages, many more people. We've got a lot more problems here to deal with. And we've got a very unusual situation uh, which has to be recognized. We've created snake habitats all around us by just by the fact that we grow rice because we have created rodent habitats. Mm -hmm. We've got probably the highest concentration of rodents of any country in the world. And having done that over the last couple of hundred years, actually, and we've that created. And to the rest of South Asia as well. Uh, yeah, Those very places. much. Very much of South Asia uh, has made a pr proliferation of rats so extreme that snakes just move straight in, and they love it. Okay. <laughs> if you go into the jungle and you did a transect of several kilometers and tried to count this number of snakes. It would be extremely small quantity and many different species. If you do a similar transect in a rice field, you'd find many, many more snakes, but usually of just one or two species, the cobras and crates, for example. Well, this is the kind of thing that should be looked at more carefully to see that whatever's happening, whatever good things are happening there should be applied elsewhere. For one thing, they don't have Russell's vipers up there. Okay. That is a very serious snake. and. Um, Again, snakes do not have it in for humans. Uh, they totally r prefer to be left alone. But a large venomous snake like a Russell's viper, when it hides in leaf litter, it's very hard to see. It gets stepped upon very easily. People step on them at night because they're walking around without a light. And so the death rate from that snake is probably higher than for any other species in the country. And the fact that there are none up in Assam is very helpful to the Assamese people. <laughs> So that's one factor. There are other aspects, of course, too. And being aware and looking around what you're doing when you're cutting grass, when you're pulling firewood out of a pile, being aware that a snake could be in there, all this is very important. Probably the biggest thing of all is carrying a light when you're walking around at night. Mm -hmm. I think that would probably cut down three quarters of the snake bites in the country, probably. I'm very optimistic about something like this, primarily because uh, already there are at least 15 major hospitals throughout the country where incidence of snake bite is pretty high collaborating on this project. And it looks like it's going to spread to uh, probably a lot wider as it gains momentum. I think what we need now is a lot more support from the government because even to collect a sample of venom is like going through cartwheels and hoops and uh, just because we have to deal with the forest departments of the various states. And uh, it, we need the encouragement, we need the support from the other ministries, for example, that of the Ministry of Environment to uh, help us be able to collect the venom samples we need to find out exactly what's going on and to try to deal with the problem.